In this example, we want to use tables to estimate the limit. And you know what we've got? We've got that calculator. So let's take a look at the calculator. Oh, look, Mel's here now. So I typed it into my calculator. I got sine of 3x over sine of 4x. The way I've set my table is um, I'm starting at 0.5 and I'm going by 0.1s um, in my table. Oh, no, no, no. Second table. There we go. So if I look at my table, I can see that as we get close to zero, uh, there's an error at zero. We That's kind of why we've got L'Hopital's rule. And we get um, 0.7588. So somewhere around 0.75 is, it, I think, what we're supposed to get. Let's double check that we're set up properly for L'Hopital's rule. Uh, I'll just think in my head because if I try to write on my screen, I think Mel's going to come for me. Um, the sine of zero is zero, three times zero. And then the sine of zero, zero, four times zero is also zero. So we get zero over zero for this thing. So we're set to do lopi tall. <laughs> to do lopi tall, you dodge your cat and you find the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. So that's the limit as theta approaches zero. The derivative of sine is cosine. So cosine of three theta multiplied by the derivative of our inside. We got to chain rule that, which is three. And then derivative of the bottom is going to be the cosine of four theta multiplied by four. Uh, so let's check to see if we can do stuff now. So we get three times our zero, our theta, is going to be the cosine of zero multiplied by three over the cosine of zero multiplied by four. Well, the cosine of zero, that's just one um, on both the numerator and the denominator. So we get three fourths. I think that's pretty good for 0.75. All right. In this example, we get infinity over infinity. If we look at what's going on with that thing. So uh, both of those things are heading towards infinity. But as we talked about in the past, we see, okay, who's winning? numerator or denominator. Um, but just to be sure, we want to take a look at the graph to make sure that the endpoints are meeting up properly at that point and things are, are, are working out in the way that we want. So let's take a look at the graph. Um, okay, so I've graphed it and you can see I've got some wiggly doos thinking going over here, but we want to see what's going to be going on as we head towards infinity. So that's what we mean by checking what's going on off to the side. So as you can see here, as we head over there, we seem to be heading towards zero. So yeah, we do seem to be behaving ourselves. So if we look at this, we say, okay, between these two, who is winning, numerator or denominator? Well, the, the denominator's winning because it's way bigger. It's cubed versus the numerator. If we were to apply L'Hopital's rule to this, um, we would take the derivative of the top. So this would be the limit as x approaches infinity of 4x plus 3 over 3x squared plus 1. We still have infinity over infinity. We do it again. Limit as x approaches infinity of, let's see, 4 over 6x. And at this point, now we just have 4 over infinity, and 4 divided by infinity is basically 0. So before, we were just kind of like taking it for granted before we understood what L'Hopital's rule was. But now we understand what L'Hopital's rule is, so we can get a better idea of why that limit has to be 0. Because those other variables just get derivative out of the problem, and we're left with just that infinity in the denominator. All right, now this one I did not try to do myself. I just kind of wrote down what, what I had. So if we get some of these other indeterminate forms, basically what we want to try to do is take the natural log of both sides so that we can like manipulate that thing out of the numerator. So I've written it all down here, and rather than trying to do it fresh, I'm, we're just going to take in a little zoomed-in journey through this problem. So I have... This set up at first, let me get a pointer. I think that'll be better. I've got this set up at first and I first wanna check what indeterminate form do I have? So what happens when I plug in that one? So if I plug in a one to this thing, 
I get 1 to the 1 over 1 minus 1, which is 1 over 0. So that is 1 to the infinity, is the indeterminate form that I'm working with. So I'm like, okay, so I definitely need to do something a little wild and crazy. So here we go. Let's go on that wild and crazy journey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just sneak in a natural log. Why I'm doing that, don't worry about it for right now. For right now, we're just going to sneak in this natural log. And I want to try to figure out what's going on here. What if I had a natural log? Would I be able to figure out my limit? Well, let's find out. So I head over here. And one of the properties you can do with logarithms is if you have something in that exponent, you can bring it out front. So since this is being divided, we can bring it out over here as a denominator in that thing. You can bring out the exponents inside of logarithms. Okay, well, let's check our indeterminate form. Ignore this for a minute. Um, let's double check our indeterminate form. So now we have the natural log of 1 over 0. <gasps> now we have 0 over 0. Now we're allowed to apply L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so let's do that. So the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. The derivative of x minus 1 is just 1. And so now can we apply this limit? Yeah, uh, we get 1 over 1 in the numerator, so that's 1. So we know that this limit over here, all of this stuff equals 1 because we kind of worked it out over in this direction. So that's what this little arrow here is doing. We're going to head back over here and we're going to say, okay, so if we had that, the limit as x approaches 1 of ln of x to the 1 minus x minus 1, it should equal 1. But that's not what we were trying to do. We were trying to do it without an ln. Okay, so let's try to do that without an ln with our newfound knowledge. So if we find, oh, sorry, one more step it is saying that, oh, okay, this is our function. So that function, if we get the natural log of our function, that is going to equal 1. So let's go back to our original problem and see what we can do with that. We're going to say the limit of some function. And the function that we're dealing with, if we take the natural log of that thing, it'll be 1. So we come over here, the limit of our function. And what we're going to do is we're going to sneak in an e. We're going to sneak in an e. And the reason I want to sneak in that e is that these two things are going to cancel out. So this, this is like sneaking in something that would cancel out. So e to the ln of f of x. But we found this limit, the ln of f of x, much earlier. That was what all that rigmarole was before. We found this limit to be 1. Um, but now I've got an e down below that's able to cancel with that ln. And since we've got that thing, we could just have a 1 there. And the limit of all this garbage is just going to be E. So there it is. So that is our little crazy journey through all of this stuff. I kind of had to, I wrote this in uh, about a year ago, and I it took me a while of kind of like staring my way through it to be like, what the heck in what order is what? So um, th this isn't something that we're tested on a whole ton. Um, so don't worry too much about it, but it's just really making sure that you're cool with some of these algebra moves um, that I'm doing and just kind of getting an experience of playing around with it like that. So ends this video about L'Hopital's rule. A reminder that L'Hopital's rule only works if you have 0 over 0. If you don't have that, you need to do some algebraic manipulation in order to get it into that format that you do want. If you don't find the derivative right away, give it, do the derivative a couple times. See what happens. Eventually, you'll get down to something that you can. But check along the way that you're sticking with that 0 over 0. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.